Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. Thought I would do my reading review uh, from my reading nook. I'm here on my chair, which is where I read, as you can see here, I even got my blankie <laughs> and uh, I get some good lighting from the window behind me. So I spend many hours in this chair reading. So what I thought is I'm just going to um, basically do my review from here. Now, what book am I going to talk about today? It is Graham Greene's Travels with My Aunt. Great, great book. This was written in 1969 and you can see it's a fairly old book. Uh, and I bought it a few weeks back from a secondhand bookshop, bookshop for $2.00. And throughout the book, it must have been a school book because there's a whole heap of marginalia in it. You could see the pencil um, notes in it. And I always really like getting these old books with marginalia in them because I always wonder, who wrote these? Was this a school book? Where are they now? What are they doing now? Why did they think that? They've basically done my homework for me because they've, um, they've underlined important passages and relevant, um, I guess, quotes that were quite significant for looking at the different themes in the book. Okay, so let's talk about the book. Graham Greene, as I mentioned, wrote this in 1969. There are elements that are a bit outdated, which I'll talk about here very soon. So what this is about, Henry Pulling, he's in his 50s, he has just retired from being a bank manager and leading quite a boring life. He was looking forward to get, being retired and looking after his dahlias and tending, tending to his garden and having a peaceful retirement. Nothing much had happened in his life. He'd never married. He didn't even have hobbies. And it was just all about, I guess, work and work in his dahlias. When his mother died, he obviously attended the funeral and he was thinking about like, well, where to from here now that my parents are gone, what life is left for me? And he thought that he was just going to have a peaceful life until he met his aunt Augusta there at the funeral. Augusta was his mother's sister. Now, Augusta is in his 70s and she is a cat. She's hilarious. She's someone who has enjoyed life. She's seen life. She was an ex-escort girl, which we kind of um, glean from the things that she says. She enjoys a drink. She even has a lover who is a black manservant named Words Wordsworth. And um, so Aunt Augusta is hilarious. And a lot of the dialogue between Henry and her was actually quite funny in the beginning and I would chuckle at the dialogue and I, th I would think to myself man I want to be her when I'm 70. <laughs> anyway she tells Henry that he his mother was actually not his real mother. His mother indeed was someone who had helped a friend out by pretending to have a baby and bringing up that baby, him, as her own. And we find out, well, we glean, obviously, we kind of surmise that Aunt Augusta is really his mum. And um, so we find out from her that just through her, her uh, talking, we find out about her life and she's such an interesting character. And she invites Henry to go on a trip with her to different countries around the world. And Henry gets a bit scared because he's never been out of the country and he's only just met this woman. And she seemed like wild. <laughs> and so he agrees to go with her and the first stop they go to is Brighton. So he's somewhere very, I guess, uh, not as exotic where she meets up with a friend of hers and her friend who is a very bohemian like person um, reads the tea leaves and basically says to Henry that he's going on this wild journey 
very interesting journey. So she basically foretells this very interesting journey that they both uh, will have. And so as the story unfolds, it's a story of Henry going with his aunt to various countries. So they go to Istanbul first up, then they visit, uh, where else do they go? They go to Paraguay and there's all these different little adventures that happen throughout throughout the way. And in these adventures and in these travels, Henry meets up with a young girl by the name of Miss Keene, who's a hippie. And I think he he starts to like her and uh, but he doesn't I guess he doesn't move on with it. She goes off and does some other things, but he keeps her in mind. Throughout the, um, the, the story, other characters, we get to know more about Aunt Augusta. We get to know about a particular love of hers who was a fascist. He was a collaborator, an ex-Nazi uh, Italian, and his name was Mr. Visconti or Viscounti Visconti. And as well as that, uh, I really felt for her manservant Wordsworth who was just basically in love with Augusta and trying to get her out of the uh, hands of um, Mr. Viscount Viscounty. But you know I said that I felt that this book was slightly dated simply because of the character of um, the black manservant and how he was portrayed and his kind of language but I guess it's because this book was written in the 60s and you know political correctness was I guess not a thing. Um, the other the other aspect of the Aunt Augusta character was even though she was hilarious she was actually someone who she was a she was a petty thief a low crim type of person. She got herself into all sorts of trouble and she didn't really care for it. Um, so she she was involved in a lot of things. And towards the end of the, um, the, the story, they invite Henry to be part of their scams and their little petty bad things that they were involved in. And he has this decision, this moral dilemma as to what does he do? Does he actually join the, their scams or does he go back to his little house and tend to his dahlias? And so the kind of themes in this book all relate to the fact that we have choices in our life and we choose, we can choose to have a very quiet, sedate, a life just of conformity or we can do the opposite and choose a life that is exciting, to take risks, to be in life and of life and enjoy each day as it comes or, or not. So we have these two choices that we can make. So ultimately, you know, the, the, the character Henry here, originally when you start reading about him, you go, okay, he's a pretty boring guy. How's he going to deal with, you know, being out there? And yet the more that he's out there, the more that he's with his uh, aunt, the more that he gets involved with life and the different activities in different countries and his adventures, he starts to think that he's got a choice here and that life doesn't have to be boring. And indeed, he starts to get a taste for it. Um, so Travels with My Aunt by Graham Greene. It is a great book. It is an amusing book. It is a book that makes you think about, well, if you had a choice of peaceful, comfortable, a boring retirement where nothing is of interest would you take it or if you had someone come into your life and then tell you that you had an opportunity to explore different adventures would you take it <laughs> i know which one i would take you know one of the things that really stood out one of the scenes that really stood out for me in this book was this scene was <laughs> a christmas for the lonely and um henry lived right next door to someone called the major 
who was also retired and also very like stick in the mud type of person. But um, he had, because Henry was alone, he decided to have Christmas lunch at a local restaurant, which put on Christmas lunch for other lonely people. And just reading that scene and what, how kind of sad it was, <laughs> I thought to myself, man, just choose the more exciting life. Choose the non-conforming life. Choose the life that gets you interested in life and with life. Does he do it? We just have to read the book and find out. Anyway, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Bye for now.